Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. That's right, folks. This is the Grim Leftovers program on this Monday, March 18, 2019. Yeah, it looks like I got everything set. <laughs> I'm not sure. You can tell me out there if you're hearing me or not. You should be. But uh, we'll, we'll find out uh, shortly here, I guess. Uh, like I said, it looks like everything's set, but I had a little little technical dealy to deal with there. So, <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Grim Leftovers program here at reallibertymedia.com. I am Grim Nair, your host of this particular program. And I just want to say hi to everybody in all the various places that we go out to, whether that be right here on reallibertymedia.com, rlmradio.xyz, over there on the Spreaker site. Uh, Vinny says downstream now. I have no idea what that means. All right. Um, <laughs> Freedoms Network, realliberty.org. Uh, if you found us through some other place, internet, radio, tune in. Uh, yeah, we're just everywhere. And uh, glad to be here and with you uh, this uh, wonderful sunny evening. It's almost spring. Spring starts on Wednesday, so two days from now. It'll be a full moon and the spring equinox or March equinox or whatever you want to call it. It's the, it's the end of winter, the beginning of spring. So looking forward to that. Hopefully that'll be cool. <laughs> all right, all right. Um... Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, let me say hi and howdy to all the folks here in the chat. Uh, we have a chat room over here on uh, reallibertymedia.com, and it, it hooks you up to irc.freenode.net. But come on over, jump on in, and you can talk to all the great folks that are here tonight. Yeah, you, got, you got the barman, he's a bot, and myself. Oh, the moose girl, Miss Kate, uh, DC, and Asmo, and Chelsea Doni, and IB, Doncy, Mr. Ponder Gander. Uh, the rain, rain woman, uh, Rob works in trust no one, and Vanna White, she's one of our great bots. We got Mr. Vin Easley, Vincent Easley himself. Did somebody just, uh, uh, we got a, we got a weather bot too, a uh, weather dork here. So we got Phantom and Beetle and Colfax and Cyborg Noodle. We got Dakota and Flash somebody and Frumpy and Gromit and He-He-Man. I guess that's a laughing He-Man. All right, we got Java Doctor too. <laughs> I don't always recognize everybody that's in here. Uh, usually I do, but uh, not always. And we got Java Doctor too. We got JJ's, and we got Kozu in uh, Kiss, and we got Mo E and Pone Sauce and Sock Puppet and Tech Man and Trust No One, aka Roams, and the Uno Bot. So uh, hopefully you're all hearing me out there. I, I, Vinny's making some comments here, and I'm not really positive what this means downstream now hitting the air okay <laughs> hopefully everything's working hopefully i'm going out to uh, the places i'm supposed to according to my broadcast unit it says i am connected to both rlm radio on the regular shoutcast stream and spreaker so um there we go Kicking it off from an older uh, story from a little while ago on the nationalpost.com. Uh, it's after a license plate was denied, Sask, I think it means Saskatchewan man, uh, opts for giant ass man decal. <laughs> now, I, I, there was a, I think it was a Seinfeld episode. Seinfeld, Seinfeld, whatever. That 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 one guy that used to have a show on, he, and people thought he was funny. Um, and one of the episodes I remember seeing it, and and who was the guy? I think it was Kramer. Kramer wanted to be the ass man, and he was denied because somebody else was the ass man. Um, anyway, so apparently this guy was trying to get a license plate that said "ass man," and uh, the Saskatchewan folk up there said. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So um, he went ahead and had the whole tailgate of his pickup truck. He's got a little pickup truck. Uh, and it says, he made it look just like a license plate. It says Saskatchewan on top, ass man in these big old letters 
Land of Living Skies. I don't even know what that means. Five by nine, and now you're really screwing with me, aren't you? <laughs> so, so when it comes to celebrating his family name, David Assman, that's his actual name, Dave Assman, refuses to take no for an answer. After Saskatchewan government insurance, SGI, okay, uh, denied his latest request for an Assman vanity license plate, the Melville man had an oversized decal designed to replicate the plate in question and then place the decal on the decal on the tailgate of his white Dodge Ram pickup truck. Assman pronounced Osman? No, 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 it's pronounced Assman. You can pronounce it Osman if you want. But no, I'm looking right at it and that says Assman. Anyway, uh said he appealed the SGI's decision on Tuesday and received a message uh, around four hours later that his request had once again been rejected. I, I could have got a plate for the front, but I really wanted that vanity plate on the back of my truck, on the ass end of his truck, ass man wrote in a social media post showing off the decal. See, I, I hate to say it, but I'm kind of sarcastic, a sarcastic ass, and, well, I just wanted to go big. He said after a, a later via direct message. In addition, his name, uh, to his name, the decal includes the word Saskatchewan and the provincial motto, Land of the Living Skies, which, what is, what is that? What, what's a living sky? All right. It, it even features what looks like the four bolt openings uh, to, for attaching the plate uh, to, to the vehicle. <laughs> All right, thank you, Vinny. <laughs> All right, so uh, Ass Man first tried to put his name on a license plate back in the 90s. That application was rejected as profanity. His recent application denied on the grounds that it was offensive. It's the dude's name. The dude's name is profanity and offensive? Well, I'm surprised they're not trying to make him change his name. Says, I think they are too worried that people are uh, going to have hurt feelings. They're going to be butt hurt, I guess, over ass man. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a story of no importance. In case you were wondering uh, why, why, I'm, why I'm doing this story, it's a story of no importance, but I find it highly humorous. And, and um, it doesn't mention here whether he is actually an ass man, whether he... He, he, he is a big fan of, of asses. Um, and, and as far as it being profanity, do you have an ass? Have you ever referred to it as, hey, that's my ass? <laughs> so whether if that's, if that's profane or offensive, then every person out there is either profane or offensive or both, maybe. I don't know. Uh... Here's to all the ass men out there and the ass women. Yes, indeed. And Vinny's posting a link to the uh, the Living Skies Tourism link there from Saskatchewan. Thank you for that, Vinny. All right. <laughs> all right, this next story comes to you from themindunleashed.com. Uh, somehow kind of connected with minds.com, the, the social network, but... Connected, but separate. And I bring this story to you. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Super rare black leopard photographed in Africa for the first time in 100 years. This article from February 13th, posted by Amanda Froelich. In early 18... <laughs> in early 18... In early 2018, a black leopard was caught on camera in Kenya by a biologist... Nick Pilfold. Though the big cat's existence was merely a rumor at the time, Pilfold and his team deployed a set of camera traps throughout the bushland of the Lociba, Meh. Lociaba, whatever, conservancy. Before long, they captured undeniable proof of the rare melanistic leopard. As National Geographic reported, it is incredibly rare for the leopard to be born with melanism, the opposite of albinism, 
Melanism is the first, uh, is the result of a gene that causes an excess of pigment in the skin or hair of an animal. As a result, it appears black. Well, it doesn't appear black, it is black. <laughs> I don't know. What I don't know, what, what do they mean by that? Yes, it appears black because it is. Images of the rare black leopard were published in January in the African Journal of Ecology. Though sightings are rare, several have been reported in the past few decades. Pilford is, however, the first to have provided evidence in 100 years. Previously, the only sighting ever confirmed was way back in 1909. The image was snapped in Addis Ababa, uh, Ethiopia and is stored in the collections of the National Museum of History in Washington, D.C. I'll just tell you this because, I, and some of you may or may not choose to believe such things, but way back when I was, oh, in my early 20s, I took a small trip in, in, in my apartment <laughs> with the aid of a certain chemical substance. And on that trip, uh, I met my spirit guides. And one of them was this animal, this black leopard. It could have been a black panther. Uh, they, they look pretty much the same. Um, <laughs> but it looked just like the photo here, the, the one that I saw in, in, uh, in, in my, in my, on my trip. These were my animal spirit guides, this and also this uh, big black uh, Hawk. Um, so I, I don't know why I, my, uh, my my mind was going with the black animals during that particular thing, and or that's that's apparently what I'm connected to in the uh, that kind of world. But 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 I am I am, and, and so I found this story fascinating that they uh, were were doing this here. So here it is. There you go. The black leopard of Africa. That's all on that. Nothing really too exciting on that. <laughs> all right. Also from the Mind Unleashed site, uh, posted by Elias Marat. U.S. national debt tops $22 trillion for the first time in history as recession looms. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think the recession's already upon us. They just haven't notified us yet anyway in the latest sign the latest sign not the first sign not the last sign just the latest sign that the united states economy is facing deep trouble the treasury department announced that the public debt has topped a staggering 22 trillion dollars this figure is one trillion dollar increase from last year and a sign that the fiscal situation of the United States is growing increasingly dire. Well, you could have just knocked me over with a feather after hearing that. I was shocked. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> All right. Anyway, many analysts are pointing to increased government spending. Well, duh. <laughs> it says by the Trump administration, paired with a $1.5 trillion tax cut, so a tax cut is a deficit increaser. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you uh, if they don't steal as much of your money as they want, then that that's a that that is a bad for them. Anyway, the tax cut that primarily benefited wealthy Americans. I don't know who it benefited. It did benefit me. It didn't hurt me. One way or the other, I don't really care about their taxes and their tax cuts and their spending and uh, but but this number 22 trillion uh, would be disturbing if I was a fan of fiat currency since I'm not it doesn't really matter to me but it could be exciting to watch as we go forward uh, if the dollar does actually go into a free fall dive and Kate points out she hasn't seen much of a recovery since 07 and 08. No, I have not either. Although they sure talked it up big. They sure pretended there was a recovery. Anyway, <laughs> and as far as the stock market goes, if you want to just gauge the economy based on 
stock market indexes or indices, uh, I suppose is the proper word. Um, yeah, the stock market went way up, doubled or whatever. Uh, so it didn't affect people down here on the on the on the street. I mean, my my prices of food and gasoline, uh, gasoline had an up and down kind of thing going on, but uh, it's it's still back where it was then. Um, but but many things cost much more now, and your dollar is worth less than it was then. So if you're still holding dollars from say 2005. That you and you know what you could have bought in 2005 with those dollars, you're gonna buy uh, three quarters of that maybe now. You're gonna buy less of whatever it was, depending on what it is, what sector it's in. Some things came down, uh, but they always do. And other things that that you need to live every day, those things went up. Anyway, uh, such deficit deficits are sure to lead to a growing public debt. I'm not really sure why, which according to some estimates could be equal to 93% of the U.S. gross domestic product in 2029. 2029, another 10 years. Yeah, I'll probably be dead by then. Uh, and 150% of GDP, which uh, by 2049, uh, according to the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office. Uh-huh, Yeah. Anyway, such annual deficits have been unprecedented since the 1940s at the dawn of the U.S. post-World War II boom. <laughs> Is that what you want to call it? All right. Federal debt held by the public is projected to reach $16.6 trillion at the end of 2019 relative to the size of the economy. That amount at 78% of GDP, uh, that's at present, and they're talking 150 GDP and another 20 odd 30 odd years uh, uh anyway uh would be nearly at at twice its average over the past 50 years by 2029 the debt is estimated to reach 28.7 trillion or 93 percent of the gdp a higher level than any time since just after world war ii it would continue to grow after 2029 reaching about 150 percent of gdp <laughs> Oh, and they really think they're going to get there? Do you really think you're going to make it to, to having a, a, a debt at 150% of GDP? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking no. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking something something definitely will have to change between uh, then and now. And, and uh, well, some of you will see. Some of us won't. Anyway, and as the U.S. continues to borrow trillions... Interest costs are sure to bog down any hope that the country's economy can get out of the deep red. They have no interest in getting out of the deep red. If they did, would they keep on increasing this? Trillions and trillions and trillions? Wasting it on crap like military? Anyway, our national debt matters because it threatens the economic future of every American, said Michael Peterson, CEO of Peter G. Peterson foundation budget sorry i got tripped up on the names there it didn't make any sense as we borrow trillion after trillion interest costs will weigh on our economy and make it harder to fund important investments in our future we're already paying an average of one billion dollars every day in interest on the debt and we will spend a staggering seven trillion in interest costs over the next decade, $7 trillion in interest costs. The national debt effectively doubled under the Obama administration, rising from $10.6 trillion when he took office to nearly $20 trillion when he left. However, the rapid fiscal burn has effectively been a bipartisan project, with neither the Democrats nor the Republicans seeking to end the costly wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, curb soaring military costs, nor adjust the, uh, address the rising cost of health care and Social Security in the U.S. Wait, I thought Obamacare was going to address the rising cost of health care. Isn't that what, we, what they told you to sell it to you? <laughs> and while Trump said in 2015, when you have 18, nine, 18 to $19 trillion in debt, they need someone like me to straighten it out. Oh, you're doing a bang-up job there, buddy! <laughs> 
The administration attempts to spur economic growth through a trade war. Yeah, that's working out real well, too, ain't it? War with China and tax cuts. Uh, a trade war with China and tax cuts benefiting the wealthiest Americans have shown little sign of resolving the long-term U.S. fiscal crisis. You think? <laughs> The recent data is fueling continued speculation that a U.S. economic recession is fast approaching. Yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's already here. I, I think it's 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 well it's well into the recession already. They just haven't uh, shared you with that news yet. Shared that news with you yet? <laughs> As few in Washington have shown the political will to address the spiraling deficits and debt. That could throw the U.S. into a period of stagflation, rife with growing inflation and high unemployment rates. Party! <laughs> oh, well, Rob, you could try that, and if you could get somebody to loan you double your income every month, then it'll work until they want their money back. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> it's a possibility. All right. All right, here we are on marketwatch.com. It's a, a site that is uh, run by the uh, folks over there at Wall Street Journal. Imagine that. And I'm sharing a story from it with you. From February 13th, uh, just last month, about a month ago. Anti-vaxxer. Wife of top Trump aide says, bring back our childhood diseases. I couldn't possibly agree more. Anyway, her name is Darla Shine, and she's wife of the White House communications director and former Fox exec, uh, Bill Shine. Never heard of him. Is no stranger to controversy when it comes to Twitter where she's been known to be a fan to she's been known to fan conspiracy flames around Sandy Hoax, uh, truthers, Sharia law, sunscreen, and pretty much all things info wars. She was back at it Wednesday with this tweet. Uh, here we go, LOL. Measles outbreak on CNN. Fake hysteria. The entire baby boom population alive today had measles as kids. Bring back our childhood diseases. They keep you healthy and fight cancer. As you can see, she garnered about 22 comments for every like. I would have liked it. I, I, I'd, I'd have liked her thing. I may have commented on it too, but I, I would have certainly liked that comment if I had known who she was and, and saw the tweet when it was, you know, newer. Anyway, in other words, she her ratioed tweet was getting blasted across social media as the meme responses just keep flying. And and the reason she's getting blasted across social media is uh, people are morons. People are freaking morons, and they believe what they're being fed by the establishment, whether that be the government or the clap or uh, whoever. Uh, the, the pharmaceutical companies, uh, just, you know, medical industrial complex in general. Uh, they believe what they're being fed. It's nonsense, but they believe it, generally. You, the folks here, really, really media folks, don't believe it. But those out there, and you can tell when you go on Twitter and you, and you look at various stuff that's trending and it's always just such complete nonsense. <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> They got a bunch of uh, 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 various um, memes posted in here that were, I guess, posted as a response to her anti-vaxxer take on things. But it wasn't all fun and GIFs. While many shared their heartbreaking stories of childhood illness, someone brought up this snippet from an essay written by Roald Dahl in which he said, It's almost a crime. Not to immunize your kids. I don't know, Roald Dahl. I've heard the name somewhere, and I, I don't know who he is. Anyway, he said, Olivia, my eldest daughter, caught measles when she was seven years old. As the illness took its usual course, 
I can remember reading to her often in bed and not feel, feeling particularly alarmed about it. Then one morning she was on the road to recovery. I was sitting on her bed uh, showing her how to fashion little animals out of colored pipe cleaners. And when it came to her turn to make one herself, I noticed that her fingers and her mind were not working together as she couldn't do anything. Are you feeling all right? I asked her. I feel all sleepy, she said. In an hour she was unconscious. In 12 hours she was dead. What it doesn't say here about what Roald Dahl may have given to his child as medication for that illness of measles. Uh, but he he does say that she did die there, so I'm not going to question him on that. But I will question what he may have, how he may have treated her uh, during that particular illness, because I, everybody I knew as a kid had wound up getting the measles, mumps, various other things, and they all just did fine. Uh, so I, I I think he's got an agenda behind his story, beyond his the fact that his daughter died. Anyway, the anti-vax movement has come under increased scrutiny as of late, with more than a hundred people infected in the, the, the what? Infect a hundred people infected in the U.S. this year alone. What? I, I guess they're talking about measles there, but they don't really mention that. Ironically, the outbreak comes after the disease was declared eliminated in this country in 2000. Well, who declared it? Eliminated. I didn't declare it eliminated. Did you declare it eliminated? Did you say measles was gone and finished? Probably not. <laughs> Around the world, cases of the viral illness have surged by about 50% in the last at last count, according to the World Health Organization, which lists vaccine hesitancy. <laughs> Got that? Vaccine hesitancy. Among the year's top 10 threats to global health. Oh, I don't know if I want to take that. Oh, you're my vaccine hesitant. You're, 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 you're at risk to global health. <laughs> Aspirin kills some kids, says Vinny. I, I, I might have heard that. I don't know, but whatever. Um. Anyway, the proportion of kids not getting inoculations has roughly quadrupled over the past 15 years. According to the CDC, as a result, about 47,000 children, or 1.3%, born in 2015, had not been vaccinated in by 2017. Good! Just compared with just 0.3% of kids in 2001. Uh, yeah, because people wised up in those in those 15 years uh, about about the dangers of the vaccines. Anyway, even though the CDC's advisory committee on immunization practices recommends routine vaccinations by age two uh, against 14 potentially serious illnesses, including polio, the measles, mumps, rubella, hepatitis B, and varicella. I don't I don't know what that is. Anyway, they have embedded here a, a thing from CNN, but it, it's such nasty propaganda. All this stuff is, and um, I I don't want to say anything about the woman that they they started the article off with here. However, if I saw her walking down the street, I'd think she was a hooker, <laughs> dressed as she is in this photo that they have in this article. So uh, you you make your mind up for you. I, not not that that makes a difference to me in any way, but I'm just saying. <laughs> that's what I see when I look. All right, more on the measles. Uh, <laughs> from Russia today, believe it or not, from Russia today. Measles are making a comeback, and it's probably Russia's fault. It's what now? <laughs> Russia's fault, yes, says a bombshell re report. Russian trolls accused of meddling in the 2016 U.S. presidential election may have contributed to a measles outbreak in Europe, according to an extremely logical, level-headed report 
from Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty. <laughs> Logical, level-headed Russian trolls are causing the measles outbreak. If there's actually even a measles outbreak. The State Department funded conduit for unvarnished truth. Unvarnished truth. State Department unvarnished truth. Sorry, kids not buying it. Has concluded, after some diligent sleuthing, that rumblings on the internet about the alleged dangers of alleged dangers of vaccine, no, the absolute proven dangers of vaccines and resulting health crises are at least partly due to a coordinated disinformation campaign carried out by the Kremlin. That's right. Vladimir Putin <laughs> is, is making your kids get the measles. <laughs> are Russian trolls saving measles from extinction? <laughs> extinction? Reads the article's uh, Luis Mensch-inspired headline. While making its airtight case, the outlet consulted David Bronatiowski, I guess, a professor at George Washington University who claims that trolls, those little, those little those little naked guys with the big fur coming out of the top of their head, remember those seeing those at the stores when you were younger? Trolls. Now it's, so the trolls are allegedly Kremlin-linked internet research agency and have fueled the vaccine debate in the U.S. and eroded public consensus on vaccine since 2014. Yeah, it's not that the vaccines are really actually killing you and causing you to have autism, causing your children to have autism. No, it's these trolls. These little trolls. <laughs> oh, God. The trolls, we're told, may have contributed to the 2018 outbreak of measles in Europe that killed 72 people and infected more than 82,000. As proof, uh, the article includes a number of English-language vaccine-skeptical social media posts. Vaccine-skeptical. Attributed to Russian trolls. Clearly, these English-language tweets uh, played a critical role in the massive measles outbreak in Ukraine. You can't be serious with this stuff. But they're, they're, they're coming off as if they are serious, and I'm guessing they really are. We later learned that Ukraine's vaccination services and supplies were greatly reduced in 2015 and 2016 due to the civil war in the country's east. A fairly, fairly straightforward explanation of why the country has suffered a resurgence in preventable, preventable diseases. But how many of Ukraine's 53,200 cases, confirmed cases, of measles and 15 deaths in 2018 can be blamed on tweets written in a foreign language? <laughs> zero. The answer is zero. You can't blame a tweet for somebody either contracting a disease or dying from it. <laughs> it's a tweet. It's some text on a screen. It's nothing. <laughs> this is the pressing question they ask that RFERL, uh, well, whatever that is, has endeavored to answer with baseless conjecture. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Let me let me move on from this. I'll give you the link because I have the, the next one I have is is about this. Only it takes a different uh, a different tack. <laughs> Wait, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. I moved it over when I forgot to move this back here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> from Sputniknews.com, Sputnik, another Russian publication. Netizens, that'd be you and I. Mock report blaming Russian trolls for measles outbreak. <laughs> yeah, several researchers told Radio Free Europe that the Russians are at it again. 
This time, social media trolls and bots who are accused of meddling in the 2016 U.S. presidential election are being blamed for the measles outbreak in Europe. Russian bots and trolls are spreading conspiracy theories about side effects of vaccinations. To sow discord in the West, uh, scientific researchers told Radio Free Europe. Uh, that's right, Sock Puppet. Tweetsels. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he says... We actually don't know enough about the influence of misinformation upon online, upon vaccine intentions and behaviors. What we do know is that there is an element of echo chamber in this. Yeah, you're, you're the echo chamber. The H WHO is the echo chamber that they want you to listen to. Their efforts may have contributed to the measles outbreak. Uh, they're, they're talking about their, they, they mean the bots, the Russian bots, troll bots. <laughs> That, that infected thousands in Europe last year. Uh, let me let me let me let me get on down here. The fact that the measles outbreak being is being linked to Russian trolls has caused quite a stir on social media, with netizens openly ridiculing the Russia did it narrative. Uh, Paul Hagee says, "Wait, you're blaming anti-vaccination activism." On Russian trolls? Back in 2014? <laughs> they got a picture of John Luke Picard doing a double face palm here. Um, <laughs> Russophobia at its best or worst, plus Big Pharma agate prop. Uh, two birds, one stone. <laughs> oh, come on. Anti vaxxers in the US and UK, sometimes including major celebrities have been stoking fear about, about vaccines for decades. You can't just blame everything on Russian trolls. <laughs> uh, prove it, says uh, Taha, 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 uh, whatever. I can't, people come up with weird names for Twitter. Prove that the anti-vaccine idiots, oh, uh, are Russian trolls. Please do. Anti-vaccine idiots. Oh, sorry, woman. Anti-vaccine uh, propaganda appeared in Russia from the West. Appeared in Russia from the West. Not in the West. From Russia. Do not throw with a sore head to a healthy one. Whatever that means. Conspiracy about vaccines. Truth about vaccines, it should say, not conspiracy, is present in the American television series, The X-Files. You say it was Russian, also Russian trolls? <laughs> yes, well, The X-Files was telling the truth. Let me guarantee you of that. So many noticed a certain pattern when something goes wrong in the West, let's blame, blame Russia. Uh, when, when something is out from standard thinking, uh, government thinking, uh, establishment thinking, Russians trolls come out. People don't vaccinate uh, because it could be dangerous and no one dispels doubts about with independent analysis and correct informations. Uh, that was Tony. Molly says, oh dear Lord, not every bad thing in the world is because of Russia. People are just dumb. It's that simple. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> anyway, there it goes on with all kinds of other tweets and things like that there in this. And uh, I, I just find it hilarious. <laughs> and, and they, but, but they try and use, okay, there was an outbreak over there. They got Russia. Who do they want to attack? Who do they want to go after? It's... They want to say that there's Russian trolls out there that are affecting everything from Hillary losing because she's a loser to vaccines like this, to uh, hacks in, into various banks, stealing your account information. Everything can be blamed on Russia for some reason. Although, in reality... The United States, Russia, various U European nations, they're all best of friends. And and this is this is just a game. It's it's just all make believe. 
that they want you to think Russia is this evil enemy. And I'm sure in Russia they do the same thing about the U.S. The uh, U.S. Is, is attacking them and hacking them and stealing their account information and uh, trying to make Putin look bad, and which of course they're, they are doing. But <laughs> anyway, I just find it uh, so amusing. Ain't it all amusing? as uh, Ronnie James Dio said on uh, one of his Elf albums. <laughs> Carolina Country Fair, I think that was. Oh, boy, let me have a sip of water here. <laughs> All right, now, this story, I, I, I think we talked about it in the chat. I don't think we ever got, I, I, it ever got on the air, but I could be wrong. I, I may have mentioned it, and it was still in my list, but I only mention it as I did some other stories is because I find them either amusing or interesting. Not that it has any bearing on your world or anybody else's, except for this guy. <laughs> February 14th, uh, w oh, wait, KTSM.com. Man accused of making bomb threat was referring... To a bowel movement, police say. Yeah, he was going to go take a shit. <laughs> Tampa, Florida. Imagine that, Tampa, Florida. Anyway, a man accused of making a bomb threat at a Home Depot store in Kansas. Okay, it's in, from Kansas. Why does it say Tampa? Whatever, whatever. A Home Depot store in Kansas said he, he was only uh, warning others before another man blew up the bathroom with a bowel movement. The Wichita Eagle reported. At about 12.15 on Monday, police responded to a reported bomb threat at the home improvement store. The, so the employee told the police that he was standing at the urinal when another man left uh, in, at the left stall, uh, or left the stall, <laughs> and said, somebody told me there's a bomb in the building. You need to leave the building, according to a report. So th there you go. Somebody asked the other day in chat, how many um, times does a story have to be repeated before it gets totally messed up? And I said zero, but because it's probably already messed up at the beginning. But in this case, one. <laughs> in this case, one, one time. So um, police said the employee left the restroom and called 911. After another employee identified the man in question as a regular customer, apparently he was very regular if he's going to the bathroom at Home Depot. <laughs> when police spoke to the uh, customer over the phone, he said he had no intention of causing such alarm and that the comment he said was meant to be funny. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> The man said he heard another pa person in the bathroom say, y'all need to get out of here because I'm fixing to blow it up, uh, which made him and another person laugh. I know I shared this. It must have been on Freakers. Uh, because they understood the man was in serious need to take a dump and at that, <laughs> that he was attempting to provide a polite warning to the other patrons of the bathroom. Uh, he told police he was joking when he gave a warning to the store employee and that he didn't know that men's bathroom humor was taken so seriously. Uh, the store didn't press charges. <laughs> uh, you know, this this guy taking a dump there, this guy taking a dump there in the bathroom, he could have been a Russian troll. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I know that guy. Sock Puppet says here in the uh, chat room. I met a Russian guy that tweets a lot and he has Tourette's. His name is You Can Fuck Off. <laughs> you Can All Fuck Off. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's, 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 let's be more serious. Okay, it's, it's a little old now. It was from February 15th. And, and if you didn't know this information by now, it's probably too late. Maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. TheDailyDot.com 
uh, Mikhail Thalen. He sounds like a Russian bot himself. All right. How to protect yourself from a data breach that affected 744 million accounts. A hacker who made headlines this week for selling the details of more than 617 million accounts on the dark web has obtained 127 million more, bringing the total number of hacked accounts to 744 million. As first reported by the register.co.uk uh, on Monday of that week, the initial 617 million records obtained from 16 hacked websites are currently for sale on the dark web marketplace for about 20 grand in Bitcoin. Uh, the affected websites listed by the hacker are Dub Smash, My Fitness Pal, My Heritage, Share This, Outlook, Animoto, I M, which E Y E E M, Eight Fit, White Pages, Photo Log, Five Hundred Picks, Armor Games, Bookmate, Coffee Meets Bagel. Artsy and Data Camp. Um, let's see, I don't think... Let's see. Share this. I think I may have used that one uh, for some website sharing, but... Uh, I don't know. Um, I, don't, I don't recognize the rest of these. Anyway, the data, depending on the website it was acquired from, includes everything from names, emails, addresses, passwords, as well as location information and social media authentication tokens. The register notes, however, that the passwords appear to be hashed, meaning they must be decrypted before being used, and that no financial information was among the data. The second data set, reported on TechCrunch, uh, includes 127 million records from additional eight sites. Those services are Ixago, You Know, You Now, I mean, Hows, H O U Z Z, GE.TT, Coin Mama, Roll Twenty, Stronghold Kingdoms, and PetFlow. Some of the websites, including Ixago and PetFlow, used outdated algorithms to scramble and store passwords, meaning hackers will have very little difficulty in cracking them. Although information from each website is being sold separately, the total asking price for the second data set is around fourteen thousand five hundred dollars a Bitcoin. I'm trying to see what they're talking about here, but it doesn't appear to be anything of interest. Um, all right. Several of the companies listed among the... What time we got here? Uh, among the 744 million records have confirmed breaches, leading experts to conclude that data, the data is genuine. Anyone who has ever had an account with any of the aforementioned services is advised, advised to change their passwords. Absolutely. You need to change your passwords. Uh, you should change most of your passwords on a regular basis. It, it's easy. You create a little spreadsheet or a database um, through an, an, on an encrypted application, um, and and put down each each password for each website. Make sure each one's different. Make sure one's each got a certain level of difficulty to it. Uh, I use a, a password generator website to generate mine, so they're not they don't mean anything to me. But um, so use 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 something like that, and then uh, and don't use like common words and whatever. And in this spreadsheet, put in uh, or database, uh, put in all of the sites that you have passwords to, uh, what the password is, uh, and the date that you last you last set it, and and that way it's it's easy to go through and update passwords. It's a it's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. You can use things like KeePass or whatever, but. Uh, I prefer doing it all locally. Um, I, I use a uh, program called Keynote um, on, on Windows and another different one over on Linux, which is called something else. I forget offhand. Um, I can tell you later if you need it. Anyway, so do that. You should go in there, absolutely uh, ch change all your passwords on a semi-regular basis. You You pick the time frame. And uh, just make sure because these these hackers are out there, you know, um, and they list some other stuff in two-factor authentication, password managers, um, 
And and, uh, for added protection, it says here, which I'm going to say don't do, but they say for added protection, sign up for the free service from Have I Been Pwned, a website which will alert you when your email shows up in a data breach. Yeah, I don't want my email on Have I Been Pwned because you could get pwned just by being on that particular website. Uh, So, no, I'm going to say no. (laughs) <laughs> but but check it out if you want. Uh, they do recommend it, so there you go. Um, have you been pwned? Yeah, you could be, could have been, could have been. All right. Um, at one point in time here, and, and I think I also covered this article before, but here it is for you. Um, blah, 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 blah. ZDNet.com. Google backtracks on Chrome modifications that would have crippled ad blockers. Google changes stance on upcoming Chrome Manifest V3 changes as benchmark shows they lied. <laughs> they, they lied about the performance hit uh, that, that it was going to have. And they were trying to tell you that, oh, those ads that, that we let load in your browser by, by making sure your, your ad blockers are, are crippled, they, they won't affect your performance whatsoever or so minimal you'll never notice it. Yeah, they lied. It, it, the ads are a huge performance hit. And they're they're terrible in many other ways besides that. But, yeah. Anyway, a study analyzing the performance of Chrome ad blocker extensions published on Friday has proven wrong claims made by Google developers last month. Not wrong. Lied. Lied. All right. Uh, when a controversy broke out surrounding their decision to modify the Chrome browser in such a way that would have eventually killed off ad blockers and many other extensions. Yeah. The study carried out by the team behind Ghostery, the ad blocker, uh, found that ad blockers had sub-millisecond impact on Chrome, Chrome's network requests that could hardly be called a performance hit. Hours after the Ghostery team published its study, in benchmark results, the Chrome t- team backtracked on their planned modification. At the root of Ghostery's benchmark into ad blocker performance stands, uh, Manifest V3, uh, a new standard for developing Chrome extensions that Google announced last October. Now, I, I don't know if you know what they've done with the Mozilla extensions, but ugh, or add-ons as they're called over there, but but it's horrible. What, what? What? I'm not connected to the server. How am I going to post the link? All right. Anyway, it says I'm disconnected. Am I still broadcasting? It looks like I am. It was just IRC. I guess I get disconnected from. Okay, here I come back. <laughs> Thanks for disconnecting me, free node. All right. Anyway, here's the link to that, that uh, article. <laughs> All right. Um... And finally, <laughs> Vincent, v- Vinny, I hope you're listening. Vinny, maybe, maybe you two end well then, because this could uh, this could be up your alley. And Cowboy Tech, uh, I know you're not here, but if you listen to this at a later time, this could be something very important to you and your family. <laughs> From WXYZ.com out of Detroit. There's a Tinder for cows. And it's called Tutter. Like Utter with a T in front of it. Farmer set up dating app for cows. (laughs) Cows need love too. Now cattle are getting up from their human owners. Are getting help from their human owners. To match them up with potential partners with Tutter a Tinder-inspired app. Just like Tinder, on Tutter, a farmer can swipe right to confirm a cow or left to reject it in the hunt for the perfect match. When a farmer does swipe right, the app links to uh, up to Sell My Livestock, where the seller of that animal is available to contact. <laughs> now, don't get excited if you're a, like a bestiality person. I don't, you know, the, the cow is not going to select you. The farmer is probably not going to select you either. Unless he's one of those. 
<laughs> the app began in the UK. Uh, it currently represents around 42,000 UK, animal, UK animals <laughs> and available for download on Samsung and Apple iPhones. Um, as for where it, it's available next, that depends on the download numbers. Tutter has gone global. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Let me give you that link. <laughs> oh, boy. What won't they think of next? You want your cow to get fucked? There's an app for that. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern is Flash Somebody and possibly Vincent doing the show in a perfect world. Uh, Grammy will be on at her normal time Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on RLM Radio. And then on Thursday at now, 2 p.m. Eastern is once again Flash Somebody with his other program, 20% off. Such a deal. And then on Friday, Vincent at 1 p.m. Uh, in a ponder gander, Grammy at 7, uh, myself and the Moose Girl at 11 p.m. with the Freakers Ball. Uh, check out the schedule for the rest. Um, it, it's uh, been a wonderful time. I've had here talking to y'all, and I hope to see you around next week. Yeah, yeah, next week. That'll be good. Um, all right, so uh, that's it. Peace.